Hello, this is Dr. Stuart Tepper, professor of neurology at the Geisel School of Medicine and director of the Dartmouth Headache Clinic. I'll be discussing the publication Safety, Tolerability, and Efficacy of TEV 48125 for Preventive Treatment of Chronic Migraine, a multicenter, randomized, double blind, placebo controlled phase 2b study by Marcelo Bagal and colleagues. This study report was published in Lancet Neurology. I selected this article to discuss because chronic migraine is one of the most disabling disorders, as it has a substantial impact on daily functioning, even more so than episodic migraine. Nonetheless, patients are often undertreated. The importance of calcitonin gene-related peptide, or CGRP, in the pathogenesis of migraine is well characterized, and agents that act against CGRP have been shown to reduce symptom severity. This study assessed the safety, tolerability, and efficacy of the anti-CGRP monoclonal antibody Fremonezumab, or TEV-48125, for the prevention of chronic migraine. Before beginning my analysis, let's hear about some of the study highlights from the lead author's perspective. What are the three most important highlights or findings of the study? This study validated CGRP as an important target for chronic migraine. It provided proof of concept. Other studies had demonstrated the role of CGRP in episodic migraine, but this is the first that demonstrated a role in chronic migraine. This study validated the usefulness of antibody therapy for chronic migraine by demonstrating that a large biological protein can be useful for the treatment of migraine. This study demonstrated the efficacy and safety and tolerability of multiple doses of fremonezumab TEV-48125 in the prophylactic treatment of chronic migraine. What impact do you think this study will have on the management of patients with migraine? This is the first modern class of preventive medication for episodic or chronic migraine that was actually developed for migraine based on the understanding of the science behind the disease. The other preventive medications for migraine were found to be somewhat effective in migraine prevention serendipitously. For example, topiramate was developed for seizures. Botulinum toxin was first used for wrinkles and dystonia and so forth. If the safety and tolerability seen in phase two are replicated in ongoing phase three trials and the drug is approved, several important gains will be brought to the clinic. Migraine may be managed by infrequent injections instead of daily medications. Onset of action of fremonezumab was the fastest ever seen in a migraine trial, as it separated from placebo in only three or seven days, depending on the dose. And this was for chronic migraine, not episodic migraine. That's a harder disorder to treat. Since the drug does not penetrate the CNS, The rate of CNS adverse events, such as dizziness and sleepiness, is actually similar to placebo. Methods for the study were, this was a phase 2B randomized, double-blind, double-dummy, placebo-controlled, multicenter study involving adults with a history of chronic migraine. Patients were permitted to have used stable doses of up to two different migraine preventive medications for at least three months prior to study entry, except that onobotulinum toxin A could not have been used for six months prior to study entry. Patients had to demonstrate at least 80% adherence to their acute migraine treatment. Following a 28-day screening period, patients were randomized one-to-one-to-one to placebo or two different doses of fremonezumab. Randomization was stratified by gender and use of concomitant preventive medication. Study medication was administered as four subcutaneous injections in the abdomen at the beginning of each 28-day treatment cycle for three cycles. Patients in the 900 milligram fremonezumab group received four active injections of 225 milligrams each. Patients in the 675-225 milligram fremonezumab group received three active injections and one placebo injection at the beginning of the first treatment cycle, followed by one active injection and three placebo injections at the beginning of the second and third cycles. Key findings of the study were 264 adults were randomized with a mean age of 41 years. 86% were women. The mean number of headache hours of any severity per month ranged from 157.7 to 169.1 hours across the different groups. 60% of patients were not using preventive therapy. 
an adverse event occurred in 53% and 47% of patients in the 675, 225 milligram and 900 milligram groups respectively, and 40% in the placebo group. A treatment-related adverse event occurred in 29% and 32% of the 675, 225 milligram, and 900 milligram participants, respectively, and 17% of placebo patients. None of the adverse events was judged to be serious. Mild injection pain was the most common treatment-related adverse event, occurring in 7% and 9% of the 675, 225 milligram, and 900 milligram patients, respectively, and 3% of placebo patients. Injection site pruritus occurred in 5%, 2%, and 0% of patients, respectively. The mean reduction from baseline in number of headache hours during weeks 9 through 12 was 59.84 hours in the 675-225 milligram group and 67.51 hours in the 900 milligram group, both of which were significantly greater reductions compared with 37.1 hours in the placebo group. Here are my thoughts and analysis of this study. This phase two trial demonstrates that the anti-CGRP monoclonal antibody fremenezumab administered subcutaneously and monthly for three months prevents chronic migraine with remarkable speed, good tolerability, and high efficacy. The chronic migraine patients selected in this particular study were more refractory than those who participated in earlier studies on onobotulinum toxin A and topiramate. The biologic appeared to work in both primary chronic migraine and medication overuse headache patients. This is only a phase two trial, so current treatment does not change. This biologic will next be tested in a phase three pivotal randomized control trial with a safety extension arm. And if efficacy and safety are confirmed, will be submitted to regulatory authorities for evaluation and, if appropriate, approval. Again, the future appears bright if the efficacy, safety, and tolerability of these biologics are confirmed in registration studies with safety arms. The ability to treat refractory patients with migraine-specific prophylaxis could completely change our management of patients. Larger phase three trials of efficacy and safety need to be completed. In the case of fremenezumab, the phase three safety extension trial includes one group of patients who will be injected subcutaneously monthly with active medication, and one group who will be injected every three months with active medication, and then in between with placebo to see if less frequent injections of active medication will maintain efficacy.